Hello, this is Philip Hobart, Nats101, doing my report on plate tectonics. Our Earth is divided into different layers of natural material made mostly of molten rock and metal. The most inner parts of our Earth are called the inner core, followed by the outer core. The outer core is the liquid and hotter one of the two cores. Above the cores, there are various layers of a much larger layer that is called the upper and lower mantle, collectively the mantle. Lastly, on top of all the other layers comes the Earth's crust. The Earth's crust is the layer that we can see and the one that we live on. The Earth's crust is like a huge jigsaw puzzle, made up of several massive pieces which we call plates. There are many plates, but we mostly count the 15 main ones, which consist of the African, North American, Fiji, Antarctic, Arabian, Eurasian, Australian, Pacific, Indian, Nazca, Scotia, South American, Mid-Atlantic, Caribbean, and Juan de Fuca plates. The tectonic cycle occurs on the top of the Earth, in the crust, which can range anywhere from 10 kilometers in thickness at the oceans, all the way to 70 kilometers thick near Mount Everest. The crust, as mentioned, is what resembles to is what resembles the jigsaw puzzle of the Earth. The name of the specific layer that is broken up into pieces is the lithosphere. The three layers that have the biggest impact on plate movements, starting from the one closest to the crust is the lithosphere, asthenosphere, and mesosphere. The process of tectonic formation is interesting. The asthenosphere and its magma will rise toward the lithosphere, which is the ocean floor. As the magma from the asthenosphere licks out into the lithosphere, it spreads out laterally, moving away from the original zone. This slab of molten, molten rock cools and grows away from the starting point. As the new slab grows, it moves closer toward the edges of other growing slabs, and it collides with another plate. This will, this will cause one plate to eventually go under another, caused by the gravitational pull towards the Earth's center. The plate that went under will be pulled all the way down into the asthenosphere and eventually back to the mantle, starting the process all over again. This is not a quick process though, it takes many, up to 250 million years to happen. The Earth has three functional locations that make tec te tectonic plate movement possible and allow the plate activity to occur. The divergence zones, transform faults, and the convergence zones. In a divergence zone, part of the plate or a part of the lithosphere will rupture and magna slash mantle will break through as indicated in this picture. We have all seen a video of a volcanic eruption and the explosive force that happens when magma breaks through. This happens at the point of origin of divergence zones, which usually are located on the ocean floor. The reason it's called a divergence zone is because as the magma continues to flow, the resulting cooling slab of rock that forms spreads outward away from the point of origin. This is how plates form and move along the Earth's mantle and eventually run into each other. An example that people use a lot to refer to the Earth's lithosphere is a hard-boiled egg. Imagine after it's ready and all boiled up and you crack it all around and now it's broken up into plates. This is an example of the lithosphere. The biggest, no pun intended, and most obvious example of plate tectonic movement is an earthquake. Earthquakes happen all the time in many places around the world. For the United States, the most common known place is California, along the well-known area known as the San Andreas Fault. This is along the Pacific Plate, which is the largest plate in the world. The Pacific Plate covers from California up to Alaska to Japan and almost all the way down to Antarctica. One of the most destructive recent disasters, the Japan earthquake, which led to the tsunami as well, occurred in a border of the Pacific Plate. The effects of this disaster reach out all along the Pacific, affecting thousands of people. Ferdinand Magellan, way back in the 16th century, saw evidence for tectonic drifts by the shape of the continents themselves. When he sailed around the world, he noticed that the continents, if they were connected, fit together like the pieces of a puzzle. The separation of continents can also explain why some fossils and materials are found only on one side of the Atlantic and other materials only on the other side. Africa and South America provide the greatest evidence for this former continent, with the Brazilian points of South America fitting underneath the outward bulge of Africa where Nigeria is. Some other studies about plate tectonics and how they work occur in one of the most observed places in the world, California, where two of the largest plates in the world, the Pacific and North American plate, run into each other. Plate tectonic movement has been one of the major forces that have changed the way our world looks today. Volcanoes and mountains, such as the Sierra Nevadas indicated here, can also form from tectonic movement. 
usually formed by one plate sliding under the other and uplifting the overriding plate. This can cause major landscaping changes from flat open terrain to towering mountains. Plates running into each other, however, don't cause geologic transformations. It is the re release of energy caused by fault ruptures that make earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountains happen. One of the most common types of faults is the strike-slip fault, occurring mainly in the ocean but also along the San Andreas Fault. It is where two plates are sliding past each other in a parallel fashion. This start-stop mechanism leads to earthquakes but also to mountain and cliff formation as evidenced in the cliffs of California. From all the layers of the rock we can see the story of the earth and how it was formed. Evidence of plate tectonics are everywhere from the layers and cliffs, formations of mountains, valleys, and fossils. When plates collide, they cause some amazing looking land formations, although we usually don't notice them because the plates move at speeds about equal to the rate of growth of your fingernail, although some plates can move faster than that. Subduction zones, indicated here, are an area where one plate moves beneath the other, almost, and they almost always cause volcanoes. A convergent zone is a broader definition of a subduction zone, simply defined as a location where two plates meet. The opposite would be a divergent zone, as we, like we showed earlier. Convergent and subduction zones form some of the largest mountains in the world, such as the Himalayas. How this happens is that two continents or land masses run into each other, and eventually one of them has to give in, and the other one rises over it. Well, folks, we heard, we hope you learned quite a bit about plate tectonics and their movements. We hope to see you again.